Okay, so welcome everyone. I see quite a few people have joined now, so let's get started. So, a couple of weeks ago, you might have tuned in for it, we did winter skin essentials for acne prone skin. So really looking at ways to boost hydration because a lot of people get dry skin during the winter. But we kind of left out those folks who aren't just dry sometimes, they're dry all the time. So this video is if you have that true dry skin type, but you still struggle with acne. And I think that's a really tough place to be because products like acne products aren't usually made for dry skin types. They're usually made for the more common acneic skin type, which is the more oily or combination skin types. So there's a lot of routines and products out there that can just feel like too much action and not enough hydration if you have that true dry skin type. I do want to clarify, dry skin type does not automatically equal sensitive. So if you also have a sensitive skin type, this routine might be a little bit different for you. I also want to clarify on that, sensitive skin type is different from sensitized. Sensitized skin means that you aren't normally sensitive, you've just been sensitized by using overly active products, um, hurting your barrier, using products that aren't right for your skin. So that's kind of different too, and we are going to be diving into that in the next couple of weeks. I've got a couple of lives coming up for my sensitized, barrier disrupted skin types out there. So this one is gonna be for dry skin types. And I wanna to touch on a method that we use with the Face Reality Clear Skin method that we don't often talk about because we don't use it on all clients. We more often pull it out for dry skin types that need a gentler approach. And that method is the timed method. And we're gonna get there. We're gonna go through the full routine and about halfway through the routine is when we get to the timed method because it has to do with the way that you're gonna use your benzoyl peroxide. For dry skin types, what we want to do is we wanna pick strengths of products that you can use every day without taking breaks. The biggest issue that I see with dry skin types trying to get clear with face reality products is they dive into the strongest products and then they have to regularly be taking breaks, taking like several days off on, with just using cleanser and moisturizer to re-regulate their skin because the products are just too strong and they're not getting enough moisture for their skin, their dry skin. So with this routine, you can still use it daily. You can still get that daily dose of acne support without feeling like your skin is overly stripped and overly dry. Dry skin types can be tough, you know? Um, I think with our dry skin acne coaching clients, we tend to have to have a little more back and forth here and there to find what works. Because when you have a dry skin type, you don't have that layer of, that extra thick layer of sebum and other protection that a normal to oily skin type is going to have. So things can very easily strip your barrier because you just don't have that nice thick layer. So we're gonna go gentle. And I want to clarify again that dry doesn't always mean sensitive. So we're not necessarily choosing products for sensitive skin here, but we're choosing products that are going to give more hydration and strip the skin less while still getting that packed punch of goodness. Um, also to let you guys know, there is a comment section. So if you have any questions throughout this video, throw them in the comment section so I can grab those comments. Um, I might take a few halfway grab the rest at the end. We'll see how the video goes, but please throw some questions in there if they pop up or anything you feel like saying, you can tune in there. So let's start with cleansing. I feel that cleansing is one of the most important steps for people with dry skin types because it's really setting the foundation for the way the rest of your products are going to be able to function on your skin because if you're really stripping your skin right away, everything else is going to burn and sting. And you're just gonna have a terrible time. There are a lot of products out there that are gonna be great for your skin, but they're gonna burn if your skin is compromised. A lot of people with dry skin do tend to get sensitized or compromised skin because it is just easier for it to happen. Because remember we talked about that 
production of sebum that creates that protective layer. There's not as much of it. So it's just going to happen more often. So we're going to choose gentle cleansers. And I always have to mention it. I know you've all seen it. You've probably all tried it. It's our number one selling cleanser for good reason. Um, but we have the Face Reality Ultra Gentle Cleanser. This is the sudsiest of all the cleansers I'm going to mention today. It has absolutely no scent. Um, it does remove makeup, but you have to cleanse twice if you want to remove your makeup. So most people like to cleanse with an oil first. Uh, I would do either Michelle Corley's cleansing oil or the Orgade cleansing oil. Those are both acne safe, great for dry skin types. This is going to me be the most active actually of the gentle cleansers that I'm gonna show you today. So some people with really dry skin, this is still a little bit too much for them. But if you have dry skin, but you feel like you like a little more, more squeaky clean, this is the one for you. It's also just, it's, so well loved, so many people love this. People buy this five bottles at a time and use it on their entire body as body wash. It's just a cult favorite for good reason. It's a really great cleanser. If we wanna get a little bit more gentle for dry skin types, I have two other options. The first is Hale & Hush's Quiet Wash. Um, this also pretty much has no smell at all. It just smells faintly of, of soap, like a very faint soap scent. And this one is formulated to calm redness. So if you are prone to redness on your skin, this really calms down redness. I've never seen a cleanser that could calm down redness before, but this really does it. It has a very light suds to it. It suds up more if you do the dry skin method, which I always recommend even for dry skin types, as long as you're using a gentle cleanser. Dry skin method is you pump the cleanser onto your fingers, dry fingers, and massage into dry face for about 30 seconds to a minute to really emulsify the gunk on your face. Then add water to your fingers and suds up and then this cleanser suds right up and then you get in there and you massage for up to another minute and then rinse away. That's the dry skin method. It works great with pretty much all cleansers. I don't know if I have any cleansers that I wouldn't do that method with. Um, maybe if it was like a very, very thick cleanser and you like could barely massage with it, just add a little bit of water if that's your case. So that's Quiet Wash. Again, another much, much, much loved cleanser. Then we have Gentle Cleanser. And this one is for my dry skin types that are sensitized. If you have dry skin type that is sensitized, things will sting on your skin. You'll be very prone to redness. Um, you feel like barely any products that you put on don't cause stinging. Um, and that can happen with very, very dry skin very commonly. So this is Gentle Cleanser from Botnia. And I like this because it really was formulated to help rebuild the strength and integrity of your skin if it has been weakened and needs rebuilding. It smells very, very lightly of like kind of like a chamomile type scent, um, but this does have natural antimicrobial properties as well, so it does help with breakouts. I find that you can remove light makeup with this, but if you wear anything waterproof, any longer wear makeup, go in with an oil cleanser first. You can use the Botnia oil cleanser, or you can use the Orgade oil cleanser, or the Michelle Corley oil cleanser. All acne safe, all very lovely. The Botnia oil balancing cleanser, balancing oil cleanser, that's it. Balancing oil cleanser is best for dry skin types because it will leave a little bit more of a moisturized finish to the skin, whereas those other two cleansing oils rinse off very, very clean. So that is the Botnia Gentle Cleanser. I always want to call this one Ultra Gentle Cleanser. They all have gentle in the name, but this is just Gentle Cleanser. This is also pretty cool packaging. This is infinitely recyclable and it has a coating inside, so you're not gonna get any toxins from the metals. Such a cool product. This is also made an hour and a half from us, so very local product. Okay, so that is cleansers, and I can't tell you guys who's releasing it, but somebody is releasing an acne safe, creamy cleanser in the next few months and if I could fast forward to the next few months, it would be in here. Um, but you guys will just have to wait and see. It's a very exciting launch. And I think everyone with dry, acne-prone skin is going to be obsessed with it. But anyways, moving on. My lips are sealed. I will not mention who's releasing that. 
So toner. For toner, I'm going to keep this simple. If you have dry skin, you just want hydration in your toner step. And not just for hydration, but to balance the pH of your skin, which is going to just keep your skin healthier and ready to take on some corrective serums. So my two hydrating toners, I think I mention these all, all the time, um, Face Reality's Moisture Balance Toner. Anyone with dry skin who's using Face Reality, this is the toner you need. Don't even try the Calming Facial Toner. It's not going to give you what you need. That's the honest opinion. You need Moisture Balance Toner. I have mentioned this before, but Moisture Balance Toner is like almost, there's like a couple ingredients off, but it's almost identical to Cucumber Hydration Toner. Um, cucumber Hydration Toner just has more cucumber extract, so it has a stronger cucumber scent to it. But I like the Cucumber Toner because it comes in a tiny little size and it comes with a mist mist top. So if you have dry skin, you can just mist this on. It's really nice throughout the day. As soon as I jump out of the shower, it's good stuff. Timed method. Timed method is very helpful for dry skin types or skin types that are more prone to sensitivity because it is letting your skin get used to acne med. Acne med is a benzoyl peroxide product. And if you were to ask me if you could use one acne corrective, it would be benzoyl peroxide, even over mandelic acid, because it works so effectively at getting into the pore, oxygenating the pore, which then kills acne bacteria. It is so effective at this. It is one of the best ways to treat acne. And there's been some like odd rumors going around and different people will say, well, benzoyl peroxide, that sounds like a toxic chemical that doesn't sound like something healthy for the skin, but it is actually one of the least invasive ingredients that you can use on your skin for acne. It is naturally anti-inflammatory. It's just good stuff. So I'm struggling to open this box. There we go. Got it. So for our dry skin types, if you feel that every time you try to use acne med, you put it on you wake up in the morning, your skin is just like impossibly dry, so dry that you feel like you can't use your other correctives, like your mandelic serum that you should be using in the morning, do the timed method. This is a great way to acclimate your skin. You can do this for a week and then get back to using your acne med all night long. So timing method, cleanse your skin and try to cleanse it pretty thoroughly. Even with a gentle cleanser, just cleanse twice. Make sure you get all your makeup off. Dry the skin completely, then allow it to feel completely dry. Then you're gonna put a thin layer of acne med all over, avoiding areas that are extra dry. Do not put your acne med over dry spots that you don't have breakouts, like your nasal labial folds. It's like, I don't know about you guys, but I have like the dry triangle of death that gets red and dry right here. And I know if I've been using products that are making my skin more irritated or compromising my barrier, the first place I see it is this red triangle. So if you can avoid any in this area or right under the lip, you can kind of hit more under the chin. This area is less sensitive and really avoid the eye area. Any patchy dry areas, just try to avoid them. Then you're going to set a timer and leave your acne med on. I like to do 10 minutes. I feel like 10 minutes is a good amount of time. It's like doing a mask. Set a timer. If your skin is like insanely dry or insanely sensitized, you can just do five minutes. But I think 10 minutes is a good amount of time. You can set a timer. It's not so long that it becomes a hassle. Then you will wash off the Acumed with more of your cleanser. So you're not just rinsing with water. You're going to wash it off with cleanser so that it is gone, it is off your face then you will move on with your routine. So timed method, you're gonna do that for a week. And after you wash off your acne med, you'll go in with your hydrating products. So I always recommend the most straightforward route if you're a face reality user, Hydrobalance with crayon peptide layered on top. This is the dry skin dream. You want both of these because you want the water hydration and then you want the barrier support and those thicker moisturizers that are in crayon peptide. Okay, so you are doing timed method at night so that you're not over drying your skin so that you can use your correctives in the morning. So what correctives are you using in the morning if you have a dry skin type? 
So again, remember that we want something that is active, but not so active that you have to take breaks from it because the, the biggest thing with acne is consistently being able to use those products every day without large issues. So your evening routine is that acne med method. The morning routine is your mandelic. Um, and I know there's a lot of different acids out there. There's salicylics, azuleics, glycolics. Um, mandelic just again and again works so well because it will target your acne if it's a little bit fungal. It will target it if it's bacterial. It will also help brighten any marks that are left behind. I just think mandelic acid is just special. It's a good one. So we want a gentle mandelic that you can use every day. So I have two options for all of you. I have Mandelic Clear Complex from Rhonda Allison. This one, not as many people notice this product, but this is interesting because they also added pyruvic acid, which is also an AHA. It's also antimicrobial, but the interesting thing about it is, is it has been shown to boost collagen production. So if you are worried about fine lines, wrinkles, and aging, it will give you an extra boost in that realm. This is a really gentle mandelic. They won't tell us the exact percentage, but it's somewhere between two and three percent. It's gentle. If it's too gentle for you, you want to go a little more. Because remember, dry skin doesn't necessarily mean sensitive. It just means it needs more nourishment and maybe a little bit of a gentler hand. Then you would do your mandelic eight percent. And I, I don't know what happened. I didn't grab it. So mandelic, not eight percent, five percent. Dry skin, just start with the 5%. Even if you only do one bottle of the 5% Mandelic before you upgrade to the 8%, give your skin more time. When you have dry skin, be a little more patient. When you have oily skin, we can just throw all sorts of strong ingredients at you and we can often get you clear faster. But with dry skin, it just takes a little more nourishment, a little more time, because otherwise you're gonna to go too hard, you're gonna end up with a barrier that's disrupted and then you have to take breaks where you're only using cleanser and moisturizer for multiple days at a time and just nobody's got time for that. So we're gonna ease you in. So I also wanted to mention a few other things. Um, dry skin types with acne are always asking me for what sunscreen to use because you need something that's not gonna dry down matte and there's a lot of matte sunscreens in this world. There are so many of them. Um, so hands down, best one, Sorella's Quench and Protect. This stuff is so, so good. It also has antioxidants in it. They're gonna help protect your skin. Acne prone skin has lower antioxidant content. So you need all the antioxidants you can get. This stuff is so good. If you have rewards points, this is in the reward center right now. So you can redeem it with points which is very exciting. I don't think we've put this in rewards before. So that's there. This is the dry skin girl daytime moisturizer of your dreams. It's so good. So Quencha Protect can be used on most skin tones. It's going to be ever so slightly casty on a very deep skin tone because it is a mineral sunscreen. It's just impossible to make them not be a little bit casty because the way that mineral sunscreen works is it's creating this layer on your skin that is reflecting the sun. So if you have a deeper skin tone, go for a chemical sunscreen. There's nothing wrong with using chemical sunscreen. You can use the Face Reality Daily SPF, or you can use that Dr. SD one that I just mentioned. Really lovely. Um, but ones that are like Sorella, Sorella's so good. Um, but similar to Sorella would be like the IS Clinical Eclipse but that one has a slight tint to it. It's not like a tint as in giving coverage like makeup. It's more of a tint to help it soak into the skin and not leave a gray cast. They, had, they added a little bit of pink to negate the gray. So there's that one. Uh, there's also the Kinfield sunscreen is moisturizing and so lovely. That one has like a glowy finish to it. That is really, really beautiful. And then that Face Reality Daily SPF 30, that one is a moisturizing finish, but it's a chemical sunscreen. So it does rub in easier, no chance of a white cast with that sunscreen. And I do bring this one up sometimes if you guys are frequent flyers, because it's so good. Michelle Corley's Ultimate Hydration Gel. It's thicker and more hydrating than Hydro Balance. So a lot of dry skin types like it more. It's also really plumping to the skin. It has lots of um, amino acids and essential ingredients for the skin, antioxidants. It has licorice root, which we know is amazing for inflammation and pigmentation in the skin. So it's just really lovely. It also has no scent 
at all. So if you're not a fan of the Lilac Floral Scent of Hydro Balance, you will like Michelle Corley's Ultimate Hydration Gel. So the moisturizing combos that I mentioned today, I didn't go super in-depth with moisturizers, but the ones that I brought with me to talk about is woo, the tried and true for my face reality folks, which is layering your Hydro Balance with your cream peptide. These work best together because you're getting your water hydration that really sinks into the skin. And then you've got your thicker butters that are preventing that trans epidermal water loss and are helping to condition and protect your skin. So match made in heaven, use these together. And then I also brought over barrier renewal cream. I know you said you're tired of neogenesis, so I won't go into that one. Um, let's see what other moisturizers I love for my dry skin types. There's um, ultra hydration cream from Rhonda Allison is really lovely. There's some really good moisturizers out there. There's so many to mention. See what else do I love? Blueberry Milk Moisturizer from Sorella. That stuff is spendy, but it's every drop is worth it. I'll buy that forever. It's just such a lovely, lovely moisturizer. Lightweight, but penetrates well. I did, I kind of mentioned a few more moisturizing products on, not last week, but I think the week before it was. Uh, we did winter winter skincare essentials for acne prone skin so that was really boosting the hydration in your routine so that was a good video too also another moisturizer that does not get talked about nearly enough is the botnia daily face cream that stuff it comes in a little jar it looks very simple and unassuming but it really packs a punch it really soaks in and hydrates the skin and it has your water hydration included in there it's got your oils, your lightweight acne safe oils to protect from trans epidermal water loss. That's a really lovely, lovely cream. And I think I'm the only person in the universe that likes jars. I like being able to just scoop out my big scoop of moisturizer and just slather it on. But I'm weird. I think I might be the only person that likes that. So that's it for products. I guess before we go, let's mention devices. I know Gina, you know, the healthy aging folks they get to play with so many devices. They have all these devices they get to use, and there's not as many that we talk about for acne prone skin. Obviously, the TriWave is lovely, but you know, a lot of folks with acne prone skin tend to be a little bit younger, and the TriWave is very expensive. Um, so, some more attainable technology that's very effective for acne and can be help helpful if you have dry skin, because it's not going to make your skin more dry, is getting a blue light therapy devi device. Um, I like to use this one from Lightstim. The nice thing about it is that they combined blue and red together. So I don't have any way to plug this in, but when you turn this on, it almost looks purple because it has some diodes that are blue and some diodes that are red. So the blue kills inflammation, it kills acne bacteria, and it helps balance sebum production. And the red is for healing, collagen synthesis, ATP in the skin. It just has all that good stuff. So making sure you're getting both in your blue LED device is huge because if you're gonna be sitting, like blue, so LED, <laughs> disclaimer, if you're going to use LED, you have to be ready to commit. If you are not going to use your LED device pretty much every single night, you can take like one night off a week, um, you're not gonna see results, don't buy it. Buy it if you know you're going to use it and take the time to use it. So if you're going to buy a blue light device and you're going to be sitting with it on your face, moving it around, doing it every single night, get one with red. <laughs> Make sure you're getting the benefits of both because you're taking all that time to do it anyways. So that's my hot tip. And don't buy one of those tiny spot treatment ones because this is working to prevent acne as well. So if you have a tiny one that you're just treating active acne with, you're still gonna have spots popping up in the places that you're not treating. So treat the whole acne prone area, get one with red light included. That was my soapbox on blue LED. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next Thursday, same time, 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Bye everyone, enjoy your evening.